We want to welcome everybody to this teaching. Today's topic is called Freedom in Christ. And yes, mm -hmm. you can be free in Christ. Yes, the Son can. sets free, is free indeed. I already took one of Gina's verses already, <laughs> but I know the Lord is going to forgive me for that. It's okay. It's good. It's true. I guarantee whoever is watching this, if you grab a hold of this teaching and this concept, you really can walk in true freedom in Christ. Yes. We talk about this. There's nothing you could do to earn it. You can't buy it. You can't do enough good things. It's just a free yes. gift to receive. Yes, it is. Amen. That's true. So, do you want to read some of your verses that I already took from? You? That you already said? Sure. <laughs> All right. Let's... It's your second one that I did. Right. I That's okay. All right. I'm going to go to John chapter 8, verse 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. I got such wonderful commentaries to read today. This is exciting for me. This is from the, the Dake Bible, Venice Dake. This is old school. When I was talking to Papa Doug about this, he said a lot of people, you know, back in the day would, would read this Bible. Okay. In my opinion, it's a wonderful study bible it really is and we're going to do a teaching i have a lot of different bibles so coming up soon don't be surprised when you see us open up some different bibles that we use and i'm going to give mm -hmm. some pros and cons to each one yeah. and i think it's going to help people i i know it's going to help people but i i love i love the dake study bible so his commentary for the, ver the verses that Gina just read so beautifully, there are 1,522 ifs in the Bible, and all of them express a condition if one of them does. Did I read that correctly? There are 1,522 ifs in the Bible, and all of them express a condition if one of them does. Yes, I did read it correctly. Okay. The condition to be met if these new believers were to remain as true disciples and have freedom from sin was continue in my word, verses 31 and 32. For if any man commits sin... He is the servant of sin, verse 34. That's amazing. 1,522 ifs in the Bible. That's amazing. So we have all these amazing, wonderful promises that the Father gives us. Yes. And the more you're reading the Word and getting into it, you can see it'll say something, and then it'll say if, if you abide in me. And, mm -hmm. and there, there are several that can... That can just hit my spirit, and I'm not even going to go there. But it's there's conditions. Well, there are conditions, absolutely. So that was a condition right there. Well, and the and the other thing is, if you if you don't know what his word says, and I mean that in a good going, way, how are you going to know what his promises are, and how are you going to know the things that you really shouldn't be doing? If you don't know the word, it's it's very important. Look, I just saw Tiff Shuttlesworth. I'll probably watch it tomorrow when he puts it up on YouTube. But but he he just gave a teaching the importance of reading the Bible, and I know it's going to be a great teaching on that because he goes so right. deep yeah. with it, and it's going to be like an hour, hour and a half teaching of why it is so important for somebody to get into the word for themselves. Any good Bible teacher or preacher or pastor, evangelist, prophet, uh, just a, a, a Christian 
should always be pointing somebody in the direction of, hey, I love you, Jesus loves you, and it's really important for you to get alone with God and also get alone and open the Bible up for yourself and read it for yourself. I say that all the time, yeah. and pastors should like me for that. It's not your pastor's job to, you know, just keep you in the Word when, on a Sunday. You know, he, he gives a teaching. He's in the Word all week, and then he gives an hour or two sermon. But it's our responsibility to stay in the Word ourselves and continue to learn and grow. Absolutely. And we're so blessed to have Papa Doug and to be at the church where we are um, at Redemption House. But suppose you're in a church where the pastor really, um, maybe his preaching is lacking. Maybe his revelation is lacking. Maybe something else is going on. And if you are solely relying on that pastor, that preacher to teach you, the word of God, you might be missing a lot. So, I mean, yes, we are very blessed to have Pastor Doug and Pastor Dave, but what if you're in a church that you don't have a pastor that's on fire for the Lord and that stays in the word and preaches the word? Got that there right. are a lot of churches that don't. So relying on the pastor or the head of the, the um, Sunday school or something like that to teach you you're, you're leaving yourself at the mercy of their revelation and their ability to teach. And they may not be a good teacher. They may not be, really be a good preacher. So you really need to be in the word yourself That's so good. and saying, Holy Spirit, teach me. You know, open the eyes of my heart. Give me fresh revelation. Help me to understand your word. Help me to apply this to my life. But if you don't read it for yourself, you may never know what it really says. Right. And thank thank God for people like Papa Dog and, and Pastor David yeah. and Pastor Tracy and, you know, pastors that are are doing that and Absolutely. really go deep into the Word. And thank God for Finna State that I, I believe his Bible, um, this is a King James Version. I think they might have it in a new King James Version. I think it has over 33,000 notes it's really slash cool. commentary so Ro Roxanne and I were talking about that so when I say mm -hmm. like notes or commentaries to a scripture that's what I mean by that right so you might read a verse or two and then he goes into a whole commentary and you're like wow I never looked at it that way so it really mm -hmm. broadens things speaking of commentaries can I read one more yeah please do now, this is from the New Living Translation Life Application Study Bible. That one's a really good one, too. It's a lot of good commentary. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying this one. And we'll do, we'll do a, we'll do a, we'll do something on YouTube about that. Jesus himself is the truth that sets us free. He is the source of truth the perfect standard of what is right. He frees us from the consequences of sin, from self-deception, and from deception by Satan. Mm -hmm. He shows us clearly the way to eternal life with God. Thus, Jesus does not give us freedom to do what we want, but freedom to follow God. As we seek to serve God, Jesus' perfect truth frees us to be all that God has meant us to be. That's so good. Isn't that amazing? I think that's everything we're like going after. And I got to go to the next one. I think one. that's our heart. Yeah, right that now. is our heart. That's our heart right there. Sin has a way of enslaving us, controlling us, mm -hmm. dominating us, and dictating our actions. Jesus can free you from this slavery. That keeps you from becoming the person God created you to be. Yeah. If sin is restraining, mastering, or enslaving you, Jesus can break its power over your life. Amen. That's the good news of the gospel that right there. That is the good news. Jesus can break its power over your life. Yes. We say this just about each week. 
you know, willpower will only get a person so far. Yes. You know, willpower, you can go days, months, year on your own willpower. I like doing it. I like God's power because when you yield and surrender to him, it's so much easier that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we see, we see the power of this and the testimonies of this really every week at our church. I mean, the name of our church is Redemption House Life Center. So that kind of tells you what the, the kind of church that it is. I mean, that church is there because that the pastors have such a heart, Pastor Dave and Pastor Tracy, for bringing people in, regardless of your background, regardless of the life you've lived before, regardless of whether you have a PhD or you didn't graduate, whether you have money, you don't have money, it doesn't matter. They are there because they want to see your life changed. They want to see you redeemed. They want to see you be able to walk out your destiny and purpose and allow Christ to work in you to remove the effects of sin from your life and, and have you be able to be the person God originally created you to be. And there are some things that, that remain. There are some effects of sin that, that they are there, but that's where Romans 8.28 comes in. God will use everything that has happened in your life that either by your choice or something the enemy has brought your way, and he will turn it around for the good for his glory. He will use it for the good. So even the things you might say, well, yeah, but this is still there. That's okay. God will use it for the good, for your good and for his, for his glory. So we see this every week at our church. We see people that were in tremendous bondage, enslaved to all kinds of sins, addictions, and all kinds of sin of all variety. And they have been set free by the blood of Jesus. Amen. They have been set free. They don't even resemble the people they used to be. They don't sound anything like the people they used to be. They don't look anything like the person they used to be. And their life is brand new in Christ. And they have joy and they have peace and they have hope for the future and excitement in what God is doing in their life. And that's what we want to see for every person. It's available to it everybody. It is available to every person. And we know what it's done in our own lives. I yes. mean, we know individually and together what it has done for us. So I guess that's why we feel so strongly about this and, and so strongly about this message coming across. Each person you know? was created in the image of God. Yes. Every single <clears throat> person on earth. That's right. When God created people, everyone was created in his image. Yes. Every person has the DNA of God living inside of them. They do. Divine nature of Abba. That's right. That's DNA. I heard Todd White say that a while back. He might have got that from Bill Johnson or somebody else, but that was in my spirit to but use it's that. it's true. DNA. It's in you, divine nature of Abba. Now, a lot of people aren't, aren't walking in it or know it yet right. because the answer is Jesus and Jesus Christ yes. alone. He's the one when you, you get that revelation and he just, he draws you. And, yeah. and, and he says, he says, nobody comes to me unless the father draws him to me. The father is constantly drawing people. And in the natural, we sometimes don't see that, but but he's at work. He and is he's always constantly, at work. Constantly drawing people, yeah. but I say this often as well. He wants to use people. He, that's how he's he designed it. He he has set he has set the kingdom up this way to work through people. Absolutely, um, and and. God is always reaching out to each one of us. As we said in, the, in our prior teaching, we are the ones that can start to tune him out. The, the further into sin we go, 
and the further away from God we go, the more we tune him out and we, we put up barriers to him. We do that. He doesn't do that. He doesn't remove himself from us. We're Not putting that, up right. those barriers to him. And when you do that, his voice gets further and further away because we are removing ourselves. But all you have to do is change yourself in saying, Lord, my life is a mess. I want to hear from you. I know you could not possibly want my life to look like this. You couldn't possibly have created me to live the way I'm living. And I need it to change, but I don't know what to do to change it. So I'm going to sit here and I am going to wait to hear from you. And I'm surrendering it to you. And I'm going to walk in your ways and I'm going to get in your words so I know what your ways are. Because if you don't get in his word, you don't know what his ways are. You better preach. You don't know what he's telling you that you need to do. Because he does lay it out in his word. So we need to know his word. So until you feel like you're really getting that that voice, let him speak to you through his word because God does speak to you through his does word. Does it to me all the time. If you're reading it, it's him talking to you. He's telling you what he wants you to be doing. Start with those steps. He will keep giving you direction. And the closer you draw to God, the more you are going to be in connection and communion with him and the more you're going to hear his voice. His voice, whatever he tells you, will always line up with his word. So important. If you're hearing something that doesn't line up with his word, it isn't God. And that, that's really important to know. Bingo. So I have a question for the, the viewers. Is the life you're living right now, does it glorify God? That's a good metron right there. The way you're living right now, does it glorify the name of Jesus? Does it point people to Jesus? Does it point people to the Father? You don't have to do this so on your own. You don't. Because when you receive Christ, you have Holy Spirit that comes and he lives inside of you. And he's yes. your helper. He's your teacher. He's your comforter. Yes. So you never have to do this alone anymore. That's right. And if you get into a church and you become a part of a church, which you really need to do, that's important because we all need instruction from the pastor. We need corporate worship. We need to take communion. We yes. need to be in a body of believers. You will have brothers and sisters in Christ to come alongside of you and help encourage you and edify you and be there for you in your times of needing that support. That's part of what the body does. Right. Christ is the other. head and we are the body. Yes. I had a really good thought. It went whoop. Was there. It'll come also. back. Mm. Oh, it was good. Well, I'm going to go over to Galatians 1 because if we're talking about freedom, you know, you got to read this verse. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. So Christ has really set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Now the NIV, I'm pretty sure, says something like it was for freedom's sake that Christ has set us free. And if you read it in the New King James Version, it, it says it in a different way. So I'm, I'm using the NLT because I really like this translation the best out of it. Mm -hmm. So Christ has really set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. And then the two wonderful commentaries. Christ died to set us free from sin and from a long list of laws and regulations. Christ came to set us free. Not free to do whatever we want, because that would lead us back into slavery to our selfish desires. Rather, thanks to Christ, we are now free and able to do what was impossible before, mm -hmm. to live unselfishly. Those who appeal to their freedom so that they can have their own way or indulge their own desires are failing 
or falling back into sin. But it is also wrong to put a burden of law keeping on Christians. We must stand against those who would enslave us with rules, methods, or special conditions for being saved or growing in Christ. And it continues on. Trying to be saved by keeping the law and being saved by grace are two entirely different approaches. Christ cannot help you means that Christ's provision for our salvation will not help us if we are trying to save ourselves. Obeying the law does not make it any easier for God to save us. All we can do is accept his gracious gift through faith. Yeah. Our deeds of service must never be used to try to earn God's love right. or favor. And it did come back to me. The cross does not just forgive our sin. It removes our sin. That's right. It's more than just the forgiveness of sin. When people just look at the cross and say, well, I'm forgiven now. That is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. And if it was only for that, that would be amazing. Right. But he removes. That's right. And he, does, and he says he remembers your sin no more. And then he gives you power over it where then sin doesn't have dominion over you. That's and before right. when you were a slave to sin, you become a slave to his righteousness. That's right. And you walk it out that way. And it's so possible. It can it be so done. It is so possible. And we see it all the time. We, we see people doing it. People that have struggled with things for years and years and years. And they've gone to meetings. And they have struggled. And they have strived. And they have battled. And they have tried to use their willpower and ability. And they just keep falling back. And when they receive the goodness and the mercy of Jesus Christ and surrender to him, their lives are changed forever. They're changed forever. You're washed completely clean. And I mean, I think that right there, I mean, when you really get that and it sets in, I mean, there's such a joy, such a peace, such a thanksgiving. Why wouldn't you want that freedom in Christ? Right. Absolutely. I have a question for you. What? When do you think somebody truly gets saved? Put you right on the spot. When do I think they truly get saved? Because I've gone back and forth honestly, with it. And honestly, from listening to different people lately and from like the Greek Orthodox and the Eastern uh, tradition of it, I, have a, I think I have a little bit of a different I, view of it now. I think... It's when this you might truly surprise people, offend people. To, well, for yeah. me, uh huh. And I'm gonna give for me. I think it's when you truly believe what Jesus came here to do, and you truly believe in the finished work of the cross, and you truly believe that it's for you and for every person, and you receive it, and you actually believe it, you actually get a hold of it. Um, to me, I think that's when you're true, because I've, I've heard people say, I got saved this day. They said a prayer, they've been coming to church, but they really don't believe any of it. Mm -hmm. And they're really, their life doesn't look any different and they're not behaving any different or speaking any different. And you can tell they really don't believe. It's like, I just said this and I'm waiting for the abracadabra to right. happen. I think it's, for me, I think it's when you truly believe it. And and it comes alive to you. I it's like that, babe. I think. And it, this is interesting for Gina and I, because for me, I do know the, the date that I was saved. And I got water baptized. For her, she doesn't. But right. both of us are born again and we're both saved. Yeah. And I agree with everything you said right there. It, it, it's something when it it hits your heart that just you realize that Jesus loves you so much and, and he paid it all for you. That's right. And he just takes that heart of stone yeah. and he gives you a heart of flesh mm -hmm. and, and you he, there, he puts a desire in your heart 
that you actually want to just like turn from your old way of life and just start mm -hmm. living for him and just yielding and surrendering to his lordship and he's your lord and savior and i'm still okay this is going to surprise people but tiff gave a teaching on it and i do understand why people do i know people will say well there's the sinner's prayer and it's not in the bible but when we listen to tiff shuttlesworth and he explained the reason why he does it it made sense to me yeah. why he uses that because we take for granted as christians that everybody just knows how to pray and he said for years he would never he would just do an altar call and pray for people and he would leave it at that mm -hmm. but there but there was one time in a meeting he just looked over and there was an older gentleman just weeping and crying and and he and tiff was talking to him and he said you know what is wrong sir and he just says i just don't know how to get saved i just don't know right. what to Some do i i don't know really what don't. to say to to talk to the father and he just it's leading somebody in it it's not just a repetition of words no. and then a magical no. thing when takes it place but it's in the it heart honestly yeah I, I really, I don't know. When it's it, a when, hard issue. It's a hard issue. And it's what you truly believe and what your heart, and the way your heart is truly positioned. The way it is truly positioned. Are you really, truly receiving Christ? Are you really, truly surrendering? Do you really believe? Do you really want what God has for you? Those, those things... And only God knows someone's heart. I mean, we can guess on something, but only God knows the intentions and motives of your heart. But I think that it's really um, like what you said. I mean, it's. I think it's your sincere faith in, in Christ and that it is for you. But it sounds kind of scriptural what you said, you know, man looks on the outside, but God searches the heart. Right. Right. Absolutely. I mean, you could see someone that's up there and they're crying or they're falling out or they're laughing or they're, but it may not be real. But then there could be somebody else that's, that's having that. I mean, we've seen people laughing and they're rolling from one end to the other and they are having a major encounter with the Lord. I have to say this. When I went to the women's conference last year, there was a lady, remember? Yeah, I so told we you, love I that. love this because I watched <laughs> it happen in front of me. This lady that didn't want to come to the front, she didn't even want to come up to worship and she's kind of standing back and all the ladies are sort of just gently prodding her to come forward and she's like, she really just didn't want to, she didn't want to raise her hands and she's kind of like this. And somewhere in the middle of worship, <laughs> this lady that didn't even want to come to the front, did not want to be noticed, got just hit with the power of the Holy Spirit, she just starts laughing. She falls out in the spirit and she was rolling from one end to the other. In fact, she ended up having to roll back to the pew. She couldn't even get up and walk. And after that day, she was up in the front with flags and her arms in the air. And it just, like, I saw the transformation. Absolutely. So it it is real. It is absolutely real. And, and, and God knows what's in your heart, what your motive is, what your intention is. People don't know that. So don't worry about what people say. Don't worry about what they think. It's This is between you and God. Amen. It can hit you in laughter. It can hit you in tears. It can hit you by just falling out on your face. It can hit you in a, a million different ways by how awesome, how awesome and powerful is the goodness of God. Yeah, I think I think Holy Spirit wants me to touch on this because Papa and Papa Doug and I talked about this a long time ago when he taught taught this to me, and we'll we'll finish it with with this because the teaching is called Freedom in Christ, so we want to see people free. free. Sometimes people, you know, they get they'll they'll line a group of people up. And then the person there just starts laying hands on people and everybody's falling down and people start shaking 
and, uh, and everyone's dropping and then you're standing there and then someone puts their hand on your head or your chest or stomach and you just stand there and you say, wow, I felt nothing. And then if you're not careful with that, you can think, oh, well, just nothing happened. Something's wrong with me. God's mm -hmm. not touching me. Everybody else is getting touched, but it, it must mm -hmm. be something wrong with me why he's not touching me in that way. Everybody is wired differently and God mm -hmm. touches people in different ways. And what, yes. what, brought, what was brought to my mind, what Papa Doug taught me, and he says that he, that he has said to people, have you ever weeped before? And someone will say, yeah, yes, I weep. Well, that's his presence. Yeah. Have you ever laughed before? Yeah, I've, I've laughed. I've, I've heard a sermon. I started laughing. That's God's presence. Right. There's so many different ways that he comes. Don't Absolutely. limit yourself. That if, if you just feel like everyone's getting prayed for and people are being blasted and falling down and laughing and shaking and, and you're the one that you feel like nothing happened. Something yeah. is always happening. Absolutely. The, the Father loves you dearly. He's doing a work inside of you and he is blessing you with things that you you may not even realize to right. later. Impartation yeah. comes in so many ways. Impartation can come from a teaching. Yeah. Impartation can come from somebody laying hands on you. Yeah. Sometimes it's just being in the atmosphere with that person. Amen. And another great impartation is just getting alone with, with, with God and just soaking in his presence. Yeah. He'll impart things directly to you. And imp so impartation comes from getting in his word. Yes. And reading his word. So I, I wanted to touch on that because we're talking about freedom. So I don't want people to feel something is wrong with them if they don't right. receive in that way. Because quite honestly, a lot of times I, when people pray for me, I don't fall down or, those, or, or shake or those kind of things happen. It has happened a few times in my life. But I love this line. It, it, it doesn't matter if someone prays for you and then you fall down. It's more important that after you get back up, that there's been a transformation in your life. That's right. Because if you That's just pray, the whole point yeah, is the someone just lays his hands and you yeah. fall, fall down, okay, but then you get back up and then you're still just living the same way you were living before, right. what really happened? Is there a transformation? Is there a fresh perspective? Is there new revelation? Those are the <laughs> things you're looking for, not just, oh, that was really great, I fell down, you know, I mean... Every, there should be something yeah, that's yeah. following. Yeah, I mean, last right. week when we saw, you know, we talked about that. What's his name? David D -P -B. Paul Brooks. D-P-B. D-P-B. Thank you. There like you I go. said, I, I cried <laughs> profusely three or four times in the service just with him preaching and watching his son dancing and the choreography, mm -hmm. crying my eyes out. Yeah. I just, I at the end, I just had to run to the altar. Not for like any type of repentance of, you know, feeling sin in my life. It but it was, was just a real su touch. Just such a touch and a touch. holiness mm -hmm. and reverence and the love of the Father. That was it. Be free. And we love you guys. And we'll see you real soon. God bless you.